You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Christopher Mullen. His website is TheGoldenOilGuy.com. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, good afternoon, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, people are interested in what's going to happen to crude in Alberta, Alberta's crude producer. Uh, they've just elected a left-wing government. They had the same conservative government for 44 years, and people are worried that's really going to do a, a number on their uh, oil and natural gas trade. Uh, of course, you, you may not be focusing on that, but Chris, should people worry about politics when it comes to investing in crude? Um, you know, there, there's not a whole lot you can really do about it, and you never know what they're going to do in general. So my whole philosophy, I'm, I'm, I'm strictly a technical analyst, simply because you never know what kind of news is going to come out. You never know what politicians are going to do because they never seem to tell the truth. So I stick with price action and follow it and gauge it accordingly. There's no point in getting all worked up on potential news that may or may never happen. So I, I strictly just focus on the price. And you really just got to follow along with it. So what is happening with crude in North America? Well, a couple of weeks ago when you and I spoke about crude oil, crude oil was working itself through this little consolidation. And we pointed out that uh, there's a critical level around the $54 per barrel mark that if that level was broken, we'd probably see this uh, crude oil put in a double bottom. It would probably start to rally to the upside with a 62 to $64 per barrel target. And that's what we've seen unfold over the last couple of weeks here. We saw uh, a break and a close above the $54 per barrel level. Price has been slowly grinding its way up. Had a nice pop there this morning, uh, reaching up to uh, about $62 a barrel. So it's getting up to a point here where it's running into resistance. It's running into a 150-day moving average, which is a, a pretty critical level uh, line in the sand, more or less, where sellers are going to step in. So we've seen an unwinding of these short positions, meaning people who are making money as oil is falling. Now that oil is actually starting to move up again, they've been covering their positions, buying back, and they're driving the price up. But we're at a point now where I think crude oil is kind of slowly getting exhausted. And we're probably going to see a flat line here or start to pull back going forward. What's happening in the Russian oil market? Yeah, again, a couple of weeks ago we touched, uh, actually about a month or so ago now, we talked about uh, Russia and how there's the RSX ETF that allows you to get access and exposure to that. And Russia's fairly heavily weighted with energy, crude oil, and of course it's, it's almost like an oil play. And since we talked about Alaska, it's up about 14%. And, uh, you know, it's actually, it's, I think the easy money in Russia has been made. It's up fairly nicely. And it's actually running into, a, again, a very similar resistance zone as crude oil. And Russia stock market has been in a bear market for quite some time, and it's actually now rallied up to a point where sellers are going to start to move in. We're probably going to see Russia kind of roll over here, and it, it could easily flatline and, and actually make new lows. But um, so Russia is a, a great play. We actually played it with subscribers following this uh, this move up, and we're now out of it. And I actually think we're going to see crude oil kind of start to soften here over the next couple of weeks. Probably see Russia soften. And uh, the overall equities market, I think, is going to start to become soft as well, which is going to pull more or less the Russian equities down uh, going forward. Now, a lot of people, of course, were surprised by the big drop in oil in the past six months. Yet Russia predicted $60 oil a year ago. It, it seems that maybe they didn't expect it to go down as much as they did, but they were expecting a downturn. So perhaps when Putin goes uh, marching into Ukraine, well, he says he's not there, but the evidence is a little different. Uh, maybe he, you know, this is a good sign that you know, okay, we've stopped our aspirations to gain any more territory for the time being. So maybe, so we'll let crude prices come back up again. Yeah, you know, if they're controlling crude oil prices, it's tough. You know, crude oil could really. People think you know crude oil can't be this low; it's below production value. But so many people just look internal like you know the states it costs you 70 80 dollars a barrel to get it out of the ground so a lot of people every time i somebody mentions crude oil or i kind of bring it up everybody's like it's so cheap it, it's not going to stay down here forever well you look overseas and how cheap they can get it out of the ground you know not that long ago crude oil was down at ten dollars an ounce really you know a couple of decades ago or ten sorry ten ten dollars a barrel so anything could possibly happen and i think that the fact that everybody's saying that crude oil is too cheap and it has to come back, 
I, I think that's a sign that we're going to have continued weakness. And we talked about this several weeks ago, that crude oil, if it breaks this little bottoming formation that it did a couple weeks ago, we're going to see this little rally up, which we've seen now. And now we're at a, a point in the market where crude oil is probably going to stall out. It might go a little bit higher, but it's had this little relief of this downtrend. And people are starting to get a little bit bullish again in crude oil. And I think that's this is a sign that we're going to see crude oil get weak and soften it, and it could easily go down and make new lows going forward. I think it could be a very shaky energies market in general for for oil stocks and oil going forward. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after this. More and more people are looking to the Internet for intelligent, riveting, and thought-provoking interviews. To advertise on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com, call 604-699-8600, 604-699-8600. Welcome back. We're speaking with Christopher Mullen, the gold and oil guy. Chris, what's happening on the equity markets? The equity market has been really interesting the last uh, a couple of days. We've well, really, the last week and a half, we've seen some 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 pretty big things start to shift in the market. We saw technology stocks leading the way for the longest time, and in the last two weeks, we've been seeing some really strong selling going on uh, in technology stocks and also in small cap stocks. For example, the tech side, which is one of the, the biggest sectors down today, is the the technology sector. Uh, you know, we're seeing LinkedIn shares trading trading lower by over 20% in the last week and a half. Twitter shares are down by over 20%. Apple shares have dropped 8%. And it's, it's really interesting what's going on. The market is really starting to, to, to stall out and chatter here. We're seeing heavy distribution in some big names. And even in that same sector, you'll see stocks having massive rallies. So there's this massive shift going on. Money's really moving around within the sectors, but there's big selling in some of these big brand names and that's I think the big institutions wanting to unload some of these positions they're heavily weighted in because they can see the music is coming to an end for the US stock market where we're probably going to see a very big bear market kick in and we're going to see much lower prices and there's all kinds of warning signs out there they've been happening for about over a year now that the market is starting to stall out the, the market internals the breath the underlying strength of the market is weakening and you can see this by just looking at the percent of stocks trading above the 200-day moving average. Typically, when stocks are above the 200-day moving average, it's in a bull market. It's very strong. But what we've been seeing with the, with for example, the SP 500, is we've been seeing the SP 500 rally or continue to grind its way higher in a very slow manner and very choppy manner for the last year. And we've seen fewer and fewer stocks trading above their 200-day moving average which means the stock market's rising with fewer stocks supporting it. And it's, it's much like a, an aircraft when it stalls. It keeps going up slowly, and just before it completely stalls out, you get a little chatter, you get a little shudder in the plane, the market starts to get choppy, and then suddenly the nose drops, and it goes straight down, and it picks up speed until it has stability again. And that's when, you know, that's what we're, I think we're about to walk into. The market is starting to shudder, and eventually we're going to have that big down swoop and, you know, it's going to kickstart a bear market that will probably drag out a year or two years in length. So does the market play look like we're doing the traditional sell in May and go away, except maybe bigger than normal? Yeah, well, you, you could say, with, you know, we're, we are trading more or less lower on the month, but really it's it's nothing significant yet. The, the month's just started. We have seen this initial downdraft really in the last couple of days here, but uh um, yeah, it could be kicking in. It looks like it. It looks as though we're gonna we're heading lower, and I think we are gonna get that sell in May and go away. Chris, thanks a lot for chatting with us. Hey, no problem. Thanks, Jim. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. And, and hopefully that bad cold goes away. Yeah, thank you. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen. His website is thegoldenoilguy.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. This is a copyright presentation. Check out our popular YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Comments about the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. 
Available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.